Hello everyone. Welcome to the video lecture series of data structures. Today we are going to learn about the stack applications. The other part which is known as today we see about the decimal to binary conversion and reverse the string topic. These both are the stack applications. Hi, this is your instructor Janice Shah. So let's begin with our first application that is known as decimal to binary conversion. Students, you already know about how to convert the decimal to binary. It might be come, it might came in your digital electronic subject. Okay. So it's not like the similar, but yes, answer is similar. We have one unique method which is implemented by stack. So by using stack, you are going to convert this number into binary. Okay. So let me show you how. Step. So first students, you just need to divide your number by two. Whatever the reminder you get, you need to put inside the stack. Okay. Whatever the reminder I get after dividing this number by two, you just need to put inside the stack. Then do this step until and unless you will get one as a question. And then students, after this, pop each and every element from the stack. That's it. Whatever the answer you will get after popping the element, all the answers will be merged together. Okay. And then it becomes your final answer of decimal to binary. Let me show you how we'll gonna take this place. So here it is. First number students, we have the 12 with us. So first, do not forget, see, I'm going to take hash on, I'm going to initialize my stack with hash. This hash shows the starting point of the stack. Okay. So whenever I'm going to try to just take out the numbers from the stack, whenever I get hash, I stop my operation from that. Okay. So I'm taking initialize my stack with hash. Okay. We already did such type of things in your infix to postfix expression where we used to initialize our stack with hash. Fine. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. So first step is initialize the step by hash. Now take the number 12 modular 2. Reminder student is 0. Reminder is 0. Push the reminder inside the stack that is 0. Next, whatever the data you get, that is 6. So 6 modular 2, 6 modular 2, again 0, push inside the stack. We get 3. Next, 3 modular 2, it gets 1, again push inside the stack. Now, after 3 modular 1 students, what do we get? We get 1 modular 2. 1 modular 2, we get 1 again. So this is our last step. Fine. Okay. So this is our last step students. We already get, whenever you get 1 modular 2, then you just need to stop over there. So whatever you get, we just need to pop out and then append all of them together. So first we get 1, 1, then 1, then 0, 0. So 1, 1, 0, 0. If you know how to convert this into the binary, you will get also get the same answer. See, I just need to convert this binary to decimal. How? This is first 0 represent 2 raised to 0, second 2 raised to 1, both gets null. Third one become 2 raised to 2, it is 4, and fourth one become 2 raised to 3, that is 8. So 8 plus 4 becomes 12. So you have your answer. Fine. So isn't it easy to convert your decimal number to binary using stack? Let's take a look at the another example. Students, right now I have the 102 with me. So first initialized with the hash. Okay, now let's start dividing this, getting the reminder, push the reminder inside the stack and repeating the step until unless you get one with the caution. So let's take a look at it. So first we have the 102, 102 modulo 2 becomes 1, oh, sorry 0. So we just need to push inside the stack that becomes 0. Next we have 51, so 51 modulo 2 becomes 1, push inside the stack again, it becomes 1. Next students we have 25, so 25 modulo 2, that returns 1, so push inside the stack, it is again 1. Now, 12, so this is the same procedure which we have already done before, so 12 modulo 2 becomes 6, sorry, 12 modulo 2 becomes 0, 
push the zero inside the stack, six modular to become zero, push the zero inside the stack, three modular to becomes one, push inside the stack, one modular to becomes one, push inside the stack. Now stop. This is the last step that one modular two is equal to one. You need to stop over here. Fine. Okay. So what the left over there? We just need to push each and every element from this. So first we'll be we'll have one. 1 0 0 1 1 0 then append together this becomes the final binary if you just calculate the decimal number from this binary number students you will get the better error that you have already have your answer which is like see 64 plus 32 plus 3x becomes 102 so fine you get your answer such like this students you can convert your decimal number into binary now let's take a look at the algorithm how to convert the decimal number to binary so just what we did we did first initialize the stack with hash it is it helps us to get back the values easily fine so first initialize the stack so top arrow one as of top is equal to hash and then answer is equal to null why i took the answer answer contains all the appended values okay now next students we have take the new data so number arrow new data students here the new data is nothing the data inserted by the user is stored in the number variable okay if you have entered 102 now number contains 102 now next apply the division and reminder method over here students so first repeat while until and unless your number it becomes zero okay See if a number is not equal to 0, then and then you need to repeat this process again and again. How? Let me show you. Let me show you with the example of 12. Okay, fine. So, let's first we have the 12 with us over here. Over here we have the 12. Okay, now reminder is equal to 12 modular 2, it becomes 0. And number is equal to number divided by 2, it becomes 6. So, what we need to do? We just need to push into the stack reminder. So, I have already pushed. 0 in the stack and repeat this process. Repeat this process. So now my latest value of the number is 6. If you remember, latest value of the number is 6. Okay. So with the 6 value, I again go inside the loop. 6 modular 2 becomes 0. Number becomes 3 because 6 divided by 2. It becomes 3. Okay. So again I need to push. I get 0 over there. Again go inside the loop. Now 3 modular 2. 3 modular 2 becomes 1, okay, and 3 divided by 2, 3 divided by 2 becomes 1.5. So, number in number I have 1, okay. So, again I need to push 1 over there and go inside the number. Now, in number I have 1. So, 1 modular 2 students becomes 1, and 1 divided by 2 becomes 0 0.5. Students, it is an integer number. It is an integer number, so it becomes 0 automatically. So, you are just need to push the last reminder over there. Now, the latest value of the number becomes 0. So, number is not equal to 0, condition get false, and you stop over there. Fine. So, what we have left? Just we get all the values over there. We just need to pop out all of them, concate into the temp, and get the answer. So, this is what we have. Repeat while until and unless you will get s of stuff is not equal to hash. For this condition, I took initialize my stack with hash now temp error pop s comma top whatever the limit i popped out from the stack is stored inside the temp and then appended with the answer so answer is equal to answer concat temp okay so that's it students this is all about the decimal to binary conversion algorithm now you just need to write down an answer and you will get whatever you want Next, we have how to reverse the string. Let me show you. See, the reverse the string is little bit similar to decimal to the binary. Fine. Let me show you how it is possible. See, the reverse the string, here we are going to take, initialize our stack with hash, same as the previous one. Okay. Then, just imagine as our string is equal to data. String is data, data. Now, how to reverse it? Let me show you. See. First append hash at the end of the string. So it goes like this data hash. If I am taking hash, hash just represent end of the string. Okay. Now 
let me take one stack initialize stack with hash now i am going to take each and every character from the string until and unless and push inside the stack until and unless i'll get hash in the input string okay clear so first i'm going to take the d push inside the stack then a push inside the stack t push inside the stack a push inside the stack now students my top my the value okay it becomes hash so now i'm not going to take that hash over here okay so what i have i have a t a d and hash inside my stack now what to do after push you just need to apply the pop operation and concat each and every word but do the pop operation until and unless you will get hash value that's why initialize the stack with the hash okay so first we get so students first i am going to apply the pop operation i get a then i get t then i get a and then i get d so it becomes a t a d okay so what happens over here after applying the pop operation my whole string is now available in the reverse form so that's it isn't it easy so let me show you the algorithm for this students the algorithm is most probably the same as the like decimal to binary conversion algorithm but here let me just inform you something with the some functions which we have already used in our infix to postfix algorithms so here students i am going to use the next character function next character is a function which returns the next value from the input string okay here i have the reverse reverse is my output string variable then i have the input input is my input string variable okay so let me show you how we can do this so first initialize the stack with the hash so top is at 1 okay as of top is at hash i have already initialized it now next let me initialize the reverse string so reverse is the final string which contains our answer so i have initialized with the null now next is get the next character our first step is to take the one character from your input string so just apply a function next arrow next character of input if you remember the next arrow next character of infix this function is doing the same work and that algorithm infix to postfix we are extracting the expression values okay each and every character values from the expression but here we are extracting the each one by one character values from our input string now we have next arrow next character of input okay so what to do next insert into the stack and get the next character value okay we already get the one value so now our 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 what is our duty our duty is to push this number into the stack and again go back to take the another value so here we have students repeat while your your next is not equal to hash fine that's why i put hash over there so repeat while your next is not equal to hash what to do just first push the your previous number your previous next value inside the stack and get the another one so i just call push push next over there and then next arrow next character of input i call this function again to take the next value so just imagine our previous example we get the d okay push the d inside the stack and then get a check the condition is a is equal to hash no push the a push the a get t check the condition is t is equal to hash no push the t get the a check again push the a get hash check again hash equal to hash the condition match now it will be stopped so in stack we have d a t a okay so what to do next we just need to do remove the element from the stack okay so for that we apply the pop operation so pop s comma top it will store into the temp so in temp first we get a concat with the reverse so reverse becomes a next we get students what a t a d in the similar type of steps each and every step this loop is going on until and unless s of top becomes hash and we'll get our answer the final thing is just write reverse answer so isn't it is this students right so such like this students tag is very much useful in our day to day life this is the application of the stack today we learned about the applications of 
So there are two application of stack. One is reverse the string and second one is decimal to binary. We will see the more application of stack in our upcoming lectures. Okay. Still, if you have any doubt, then please feel free to ask me. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.